So I'd like to talk a little bit about, um, just a bit about how I got into this kind of work. And the big picture that I'm interested in is in this question of how does technology change society? And as um, Rabbi Middleman mentioned, my background originally is in history, but I've also worked for many years as a designer doing experimental social interfaces, um, social visualizations, et cetera. And the big questions that I'm interested in with new technologies are, the underlying ones are, what do people really want to do? What are the things they want to know about each other? How do they want to interact? What are they trying to achieve? What makes society function well? And in terms of the technology specifically, how do they actually use the technologies? How does it affect their interaction? And for me, in my work, the key underlying question is around identity. How do people make sense of each other? When you meet someone, as you get to know somebody, what are the ways, when you think about it, we don't really see that much of each other. You know, you, when you meet someone, you, you see something of their appearance, you've known them for a little while, you know a little bit about what they do, but we somehow manage to form a much bigger, more well-rounded impression of each other through things we fill in, inferences that we make. Um, we try and control how others see us by trying to manage that impression. And I'm interested in both in what is that process of filling out that view we have of each other, how it affects how we behave with each other, and in particular, how technology changes this. Because if you think about the ways we meet or interact with people, for instance, online or through different technologies, the cues we get to see of each other are quite different. So while the people themselves are the same, the cues that we are able to perceive are quite different. And so in my design work, I've worked a lot in figuring out what are some interesting ways to add to that information, to understand the balance of how much should people be able to control their impression versus when does that veer into the realm of deception. And that tension between making an impression and assessing it, um, I think underlies a great deal of how we communicate in ways that aren't always well understood. Um, in general, we wanna make the most advantageous impression that we can. Now, by advantageous, doesn't always mean a good impression. There are times when somebody might wanna seem intimidating or needy. It, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you actually seem at your best, but there is some advantageous impression one is trying to make, and the others are trying to figure out what is actually going on or what they can expect. And this tension exists wherever there is some kind of differing goals among people. It can be very, very subtle, you know, just the, the tensions that can be between friends with slightly differing goals, or they can be a matter of life and death. On the subtle side, um, even if you see a friend, um, you may greet them quickly, say, how are you? And your friend says, you know, everything's great. And you look at them and you think, think to yourself, yeah, maybe you look a little bit tired. It's, you know, that's, you know, a simple every day. We, we have encounters like this, you know, many, many times a day between maybe they, you know, maybe they're, they're just a little tired, it's not a big deal. Maybe there's something bothering them that they've chosen to hide. 